Seeker's own words, I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith, our grace is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. My comrades, why must ye falter? I recommend turning on subtitles for this video due to my bad accent. Thank you for your patience and understanding. In this video I'll finally provide a definitive answer to what the law of regression and law of causality really are. Moreover, I'll do it in simple terms. While we'll touch on some complex topics, I promise that by the end of this video you will understand the subject so well that you will be able to explain it to your friends effortlessly. My explanation will be definitive, offering a clear conclusion, unlike some of the vague theories you might find on the internet. Have you ever read the Law of Causality and Law of Regression spell descriptions? Allow me to read them to you. Incantations of the Golden Order Fundamentalists One of the key fundamentals. The fundamentalists describe the Golden Order through the powers of regression and causality. Causality is the pull between meanings, that which links all things in a chain of relation. And regression is the pull of meaning, that all things yearn eternally to converge. Doesn't that sound confusing? Like chain of relation? Pull of meaning? Who is pulling the meaning? And how can meanings be pulled in the first place? What exactly are these meanings? And we have not only a pool of meaning, but we also have a pool between meanings, like two separate laws of nature. What does it even mean? These spells are supposed to help in understanding the Golden Order, not complicate it further. So, why do I find this explanation confusing? I spent about two years searching for explanation and have come across many attempts, yet not a single one has satisfied me. To truly grasp what these laws signify, let's start by understanding what they are not. Let me share one of the popular interpretations of the law of causality and regression. To really understand this law, let's take two examples. For the first example, let's take the prone eater. Here he is, in Lunia, enjoying his prawns. He converges with all the elements in the lake. He's got a house. There are trees around him water, and of course, prawns. But the prone eater has a specific relation with the prawns. Here's where causality comes in. He hunts them, and with them gains his means for his humble survival. Both prone and prone eater exist under the law of regression. And prone eater has an important relationship to the prones. By hunting and eating them, they have a causal relationship. Simple enough. Yeah, simple, right? And this interpretation aren't incorrect. They do describe what causality is, indeed. They outline causality as we understand it in the real world. If there is an effect, there must be a cause for it. However, many explanations often overlook other aspects, such as the pool of meanings and the chain of relation. Most just read off a real-life definition of causality and consider the job done. But there is a huge problem with that approach. If the law of causality merely represents cause and effects, so in the time before the Golden Order there were no cause and effects? Did events just happen randomly without any reason? It's frequently overlooked that these two laws specifically describe the Golden Order. This implies that in the previous ages these rules did not apply. Moreover, the Golden Order isn't even that ancient, it was established after Godfrey's age, and after banishment from the land between. Or we encounter explanation like this, where aggression is described as a tendency to unify, while causality is seen as its opposite, 
a drive to be apart. It's the difference between pulling apart and pulling together to make new orders. For me, this sounds very implausible. Why would the Golden Order, the epitome of perfection, meant to be eternal and never replaced by another, be governed by the law that entail creating new orders? That makes no sense. Could there be a more pitiable comedy? Look at it. The culmination of perfection. Burning before our very eyes. <laughs> Okay, I hope you understand why I think that there is no satisfying answer to what really are these laws. Let's start the explanation. And of course we'll start with words semantic and Japanese translation. The translation itself is fairly accurate, but there is no such thing as perfect translation. We cannot just convert from Japanese to English without additional interpretation or assumption. It will sound complicated at first, but it will all make sense, I promise. So what really is developer's intent by wording such as pool of meanings? In this context, meaning, imi, refers to anything that has some significance. Me, you, other people's great runes, r tree, land tales, stars, basically it means all things. Also, in the regression item description, they double down on this, saying that this applies to all things. And pull is inriku, is some kind of force. Literally it can be translated as gravitational force, and also refers to a strong attraction or appeal that someone or something possesses. So pull of meaning means some kind of force that the Golden Order provides that affects you. In other words, it's some kind of law of nature. And pull between meanings is described as imi aida, which can mean space between meanings or relationship between meanings. So this means pull between meanings refer to a force of the golden order to somehow affect the relationship between other things. Now to a more specific explanation, starting from an easier one, law of regression. I am mostly confident that I found the correct answer. Regression, kaiki, means a return to a previous or mean state. Reoccurrence and recursion are also meanings associated with kaiki, indicating a process or phenomenon that repeats or returns cyclically, or in a self-referential manner. But we are more interested in the mathematical meaning of this word. Regression is actually a mass term. Look at this graph. We can see tons of dots. And it seemingly has no pattern. It looks like complete chaos with no order. But if we zoom out a little, the pattern starting to become pretty clear. The more the plot goes, the more is evident that the dots are heading to the line. They regressing to the line. So regression in mass is a method in which, by understanding seemingly random data, we can create a line that represents the relationship between all things. Basically, creating order within chaos. Yeah, that's interesting and all, but how does this relate to the game? This is pretty simple. What is the goal of the Golden Order? From the Matting Rune of the Death Prince item description, the Golden Order was created by confining death and death. The signature feature of the Golden Order is the immortality of every being. In other words, the whole eternity in which nothing will change. The perfect order, which never will be replaced. And I believe the best example of regression in the game is omens. Omens in the game are representation of evolution and its random changes. How does evolution work? Every living organism has some mutation. They are not exact copies of their parents. These mutations are completely random, and sometimes they can be useful, helping you to survive. And these many many horns covering omens' bodies represent random changes from evolution. So evolution is basically chaos, 
a game of random, which Golden Order dislikes a lot. Look at this plot again. This regression line represents the perfect average human. And omens are these dots, which deviate from the mean. The more dots deviating from the line, the more it looks like chaos. That's why the Golden Order hates omen. They want a predictable stable line. They don't want changes. They don't want to evolve. Order must be eternal. The law of regression spell in the game further proves this point. Heals all negative statuses, dispels special effects, and reveals mimicry in all its forms. So it removes every deviation from the line. No buffs, no curses, dispelling all. You returning to your average state. That's what the law of regression means. No changes allowed. No evolution. Just an infinite stagnation. I have a lot more to say about this regression. Evolution, omens and dunk eater. The wrong fools. My fight was the grandest. Most brilliant of them all. Unleash it upon them! A curse blessing to But it is too long and does not fit in this video. I will create a new theory describing the metaphorical meaning of Dunk Eater ending. Please subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Now to the harder one. Law of causality. I can see two implications here. The first one is about the nature of actions. Omen helped us to understand regression, and those who live in death will help us to understand causality. D says, Those who live in death fall outside the principles of the Golden Order. Their mere existence sullies the guidance of gold, tainting its truth. And so it is the vermin must be exterminated. Down to the very last. So those who live in death violate some of the principle of the Golden Order. So which law do they neglect? The idea came to me when I was researching what causality is and found this explanation. The law of causality is the law of identity applied to action. All actions are caused by entities. The nature of an action is caused and determined by the nature of the entities that act. A thing cannot act in the contradiction to its nature. And finally, it all came together. Of course, these who live in death are haunted. They contradict the nature of the Golden Order, the law of causality. We have a simple course of life. When you are killed, you die. Go be reborn from earth or something. Simple cause and effect. But these who live in death literally don't care. After Godwin was killed, he didn't die. He lived. He lived in death. That's clearly a contradiction in cause and effect. You cannot just live after death. The second implication describes the pull between meanings. Golden Order can control the relationship between all things. It links all things in a chain of relation. The first evidence comes from a Japanese translation. Causality, Inga can also be translated as fate, particularly within Buddhist philosophy, and symbolizes the intricate web of cause and effect that governs the universe and personal destiny. So law of causality means that the Golden Order can control the fate of every being, and choose everyone to be reincarnated by the earth tree. But these who live in death are immune to this manipulation. So uh, it's basically another berserk reference. Elden Ring by far has the most Berserk reference in Souls games. So, in Berserk manga, there is a term called Flow of Causality. It represents the idea that everything is predestined. And the fate of all people is controlled by a higher force, often referred to as the idea of evil. 
This law dictates fate, making events and outcomes inevitable as a part of the world's design. However, like in the Elden Ring, control isn't total. Certain being, like the school knight or gods, seems to operate outside of predetermined fate. So maybe skeletons, which lives outside of the law of causality, is also a berserk reference, referring school knight. There are four more evidence that the Golden Order indeed can manipulate fate. The most obvious one is the telescope item description. During the age of the earth tree, Carrion astrology visited on the vine. The fate, once read in the night skies, had been fettered by the Golden Order. The second piece of evidence is in the first ever cinematic trailer. The narrator refers to the Elden Ring as which commanded the stars, giving life its fullest brilliance. The Elden Ring. And stars are closely connected to fate. Also some fun observation. When the narrator says that which commanded the stars, we can see many many string-like shapes, which are connected to Marika's hammer. I wonder what are those? I believe it must have some connection to commanding the stars. Because the footage is definitely linked with the narrator's words. That which commanded the stars. It's not a random clip. And it's not the first tease from the narrator. Like the don't tell me you don't see it scene. During this verse, we first time seeing a woman instead of a man. Don't tell me. It's like the narrator teasing us. This is the main lore twist of the game, don't tell me you don't see it. So maybe these strings are not strings, but chains. Chains of relation. Which controls the relationship between meanings. And as we discussed earlier, control the stars. The third evidence. Chain of relation is related to fate manipulation. Because in our culture, Chains are symbolically tied to fate. Like Inga no Ksari from Bleach, which translates as Chain of Fate. But fate is written in the same kanji as causality in Elden Ring. Or more notably, look at Susan Sue Mayer's God and Cosmo Stoicism, Part 1, Chapter 3, Abstract Chain of Causes. What is Stoic Fate? Let me read a piece from it. As the chain of causes presents throughout the cosmos, fate is the instrument by which the Stoic God exerts its providential activity. In fact, the Stoic God is often identified with the fate understood as the chain of causes. Causation is not a relation between events, but between bodies. This conception of causes is reflected in what the Stoics means by the chain of causes in terms of which they define fate. It is a complex system of reciprocal influence between all the bodies that exist in the cosmos. It is literally one-to-one -one item description of the law of causality. God controls fate by a chain of causes, which is the chain of relation. And it even describes the pull between meanings as the relation between bodies. It seems a direct reference to me. And there are a lot of other examples in media, where chain and fate are symbolically tied. If you still do not believe me, I have a fourth reason. Remember the pull between meanings translation from Japanese. Pull can be translated as some force and, specifically, gravitational pull. So it controls meanings by gravitation. And to what also do gravitational powers tie in Elden Ring? stars, like Astel or Fallen Star Beasts, they are literally a fallen stars, and they all use gravitational magic as their power. And what does Rodan do to stop stars, to stop fate? He used his gravitational magic. So it's a direct proof that gravitation can control stars, and more specifically fate. That's why gravitational pulls between bodies can mean controlling the fate of people. And this is the end of the theory. 
to summarize in simple words, the law of regression is a tendency to infinite stagnation and refusal to change. The law of causality defines the law of nature by controlling fate. All three variations of the Golden Order ending add a unique perspective to understanding the Golden Order. Golden Mask's endings tell us that there is a flow in Golden Order, it's not the perfect order, and its creator are not the perfect being. The Dunk Eater's ending tell us about the law of regression by his connection to the evolutions and omens. And the Fear's ending is about this who neglect one principle of the Golden Order, Law of Causality. Of course, all of these endings are much deeper than that, but that's not the topic of this video. I try to make all things simple. And one more thing before we end. I currently have four more theories in development. Reason why enemies are attacking us in Elden Ring. Why Dunk Eater ending is the best for Elden Ring world, and why evolution is bad. What exactly is Golden Order? Explaining what it really does and how it looks. How grace works, and what is metaphorical meaning behind it. And one gameplay video, in which I give my recommendation for three best ways to help prepare your character for the Shadow of the Earth 3 DLC. Please subscribe! if you are interested in these topics. And leave comments. What do you think about my principle of the Golden Order theory? And won't you want to see next more? I will be extremely grateful to you. Thanks for watching. To the next time.